In this video, I'm going to explain to you the difference between absorption and emission of light and, and use Bohr's equation to calculate the energy of emission or absorption. Before I get into that, I want to define some basic terminology. So, when it comes to electrons, let me... This is energy. We said that in an atom, there will be many orbitals using Bohr's definition, right? I will have will have electrons orbiting around it, so all around the orbitals. Now, each of these orbitals has like a name. So this first orbital will be n one. The second orbital will be n2, third will be n3, and so on. And n is our principal quantum number. So, quantum number. See, that seems a little confusing. Alright, we <laughs> just write number. So I don't want to get specifically into all quantum numbers here, but you should know that n is a principal quantum number and that it will define the energy of the orbital. So it gives you gives energy of it of the orbital. So how it works is that the orbital closes to the nucleus, so in this case n1 will be the one with the lowest energy so lowest energy and as it grows and it gets further away from the nucleus it will have higher energy so that's why I drew this energy thing here let me see so we'll just say this is orbital 1 and 1 it's very low energy this is n2 has a little bit more energy and N3 has the most energy in this case. But N4 will have more and so on depending on the on the atom. So what I meant by basic terminology at the beginning was that we will call the first orbital the ground state of the electron. So whenever you read a ground state electron, it will usually mean it has N1. But electrons can get excited and in this case excited means an excited electron means it has a higher level or a higher energy state so so for the case of electrons excited means that it has a higher energy state so higher energy so it will it will, it will have a further away orbital from the nucleus and you could think of it as higher energy the the further it will orbit away from it so the more energy it has it will be further away from the nucleus Compare, compared to to something that has very low energy it will want to stay close to it another easy way you could think of it is as it doesn't have enough energy to complete the longest lap which would represent a a, a, a higher energy one so it just makes a shorter one like one closer to the nucleus so when they say that the ele the electron got excited it means that it will move from a lower energy to a higher energy state so from n1 to n3 let's, let's say so this will be our excited electron now let's talk about absorption and emission Absorption represents when an electron moves from a low to a high energy state. So from low to high energy. Or in other words, it will go from a low end to a high end. So 
the NF would be higher than the NI. So you could say that an, an electron gets excited when it's absorbed when, or when absorption occurs. Now emission is the opposite. When, when light is emitted, it will return that electron, that excited electron, to its ground state. So it will go from high to low. Or the Ni will be, actually let's just say Nf, just to keep it in the same concept. And Nf will be lower than Ni. So an example would be when it goes from N5 to N2. The initial N is 5, the final N is 2. So the, in, the initial one is higher than the final one. Finally, Bohr came up with an equation to compute the energy of, of, of that electron, or of that excited electron. So he came up with Bohr's equation. was that energy is equal to RH over N squared and the and this is negative this is a negative sign there in which the as I said E is energy N is a principal it looks like an H principal quantum number number and RH is binding energy or energy to remove an, an electron so energy to remove an electron and RH is a constant so our H is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the 18 joules. So we have a constant there. However, his equation was a, a little bit modified to determine if something is emitted or absorbed and obtain that energy. So the modified equation was that the difference in energy is equal to negative RH times 1 over N final squared minus 1 over N initial squared. So to link this with emission and absorption, we'll say that emission, absorption, We said that the in, in emission, the M final will be lower than the N initial. In absorption, the M final will be higher than the N initial. So we can say that in emission, energy is released. So delta E will be negative. And in absorption, energy is absorbed or consumed. So the delta E will be positive. There will be more energy in, in the system if you recall thermal thermodynamics, thermochemistry. So now let's solve a quick problem using this. So we have an electron that transitions from N4 to N2 in an atom. So from N equals 4 to N equals 2. So the questions are, is this absorption or emission? So we have to find if it's absorption or emission. What is the value of the delta E? So what is the energy of absorption or emission, depending on what it is? And what is the wavelength? of the electron.
or the light. Let's go back to our table. Emission means that NF is less than NI. So we say we have that NI is 4 and NF is 2. So NI or let's say NF is lower than NI. So that is emission. So we have emission. Now we have to find the energy of emission, the difference in energy, and that will be negative RH, so let's just write negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, and I think it gave you, yeah, this, this is negative, sorry, so it's 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And that's times, so I'll write that here, 1 over nf squared, so 2 squared minus 1 over 4 squared. So that will be equal to negative 4.08 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that's our delta energy. And if you, as you can see, it's, it's negative, so it's proving that it's emission again. Finally, we want the wavelength, so we can just use E equals HC over wavelength. And be very careful about this. You do not have to use the sign of your energy. Remember, this is not the difference in energy, this is just the energy. So, the sign does not matter, and you cannot have a negative wavelength in case you you do it. So, be very careful about the, the sign. So, a wavelength would be HC over E. So, Planck constant C. 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second. The speed of light, let's just say it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And finally, our energy, which was 4.08 times 10 to the negative 19. So remember, don't put the, the sign. And that will be joules go with joules, seconds go with seconds, that will be meters. And if you calculate it, calculate it, it's 4.86 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So, you will have to use the previous equations that I told you. Planck's equation, the Broglie's equation, and all of those. To solve this problem. So, and that's how you use Bohr's equation. At the beginning of it. And remember, if you found this helpful, be sure to like it and share it with your friends.